Hello, Mr. Angier here. I hope you are safe and well. Uh, welcome to week four of climate change. This week we are looking at the consequences of climate change. So just a reminder, this is the work that you um, have been asked to do for this week. So again, page 288 to 291, those textbook pages are available on your Teams page. And as you move across the page from left to right, the tasks get a little bit more tricky. So again, choose a task which is suitable for you. So in order to do a good job on the work this week, you need to be able to name some of the consequences of a changing climate. You just need to say what they are. Um, even better though, if you can describe what those impacts are in a little bit more detail, and it's always a good idea in geography to elaborate on what you're saying by talking about some of the social, economic and environmental impacts. Uh, in this case of a shifting climate. So the social, anything to do with people, economic, anything to do with the, uh, the money in a, in a country's uh, economy, and then environmental obviously is anything to do with the physical environment. So um, I have previously mentioned the Australian bushfires because they are an example that happened really recently um, and, uh, and it, it really sort of demonstrated the importance of uh, the climate change debate in a real, work, real way for me. Um, but this map below demonstrates where the areas are which are really sort of quite susceptible to, um, to drought and desertification problems. So desertification means anything, uh, sorry, it means land which is uh, otherwise good land turning into desert, nothing growing. And you can see, can't you, that there's lots of areas here, uh, yeah, particularly in, in North Africa, in the Middle East and Central Asia. Uh, you've also got quite large parts of um, the United States and, and Northern Mexico. And of course, down here, um, poor old Australia. Um, the other thing that this map demonstrates is areas which are susceptible to cyclones. Now cyclones, typhoons or hurricanes, they are all the same thing. It just depends on where in the world you're talking about. Um, but the thing that, um, that, that, well, the fact that they are all the same thing rel relies on the fact that you have to have very warm water in order for a hurricane, cyclone or um, typhoon to actually occur. And what we're seeing is that as the world is warming up, as the oceans are warming up, the areas which are able to be affected by hurricanes are increasing. The number of areas susceptible to these, um, these typhoons or cyclones or hurricanes are actually increasing. It used to be sort of very much in between the Tropic of Cancer up here and uh, the Tropic of Capricorn down here, uh, but now we're seeing that actually areas outside of the tropics are affected. So um, initially we've got these, these changes in weather and I'd like to or show you um, some really good clips in order for you to get a better understanding of this. So um, if you want to have a look at a, an Australian um, example, um, please have a look at this YouTube clip on the left. I mean, the Sahel region in Africa is another area. Now, this is a, a much, much poorer area. The, these two clips will give you a really good understanding of a rich area impact and a poor area impact. Um, but the Sahel region is a region in, um, in sort of uh, uh, sub-Saharan Africa, just south of the Sahara Desert. Uh, and it's an area that, that's sort of semi-desert, a little bit like large parts of Australia. And um, it's home to 18 million people who, who largely rely on farming for their food and income. So they are particularly vulnerable in that part of the world to a changing climate and particularly drought. Um, so um, what I'd like you to do is watch those two videos. You'll need to go onto the PowerPoint um, to click on these links and write down as many consequences as uh, sorry of these droughts as you can. So categorize the consequences if you can into social, economic or environmental. Okay, so welcome back. I hope you found those um, useful. Now, um, this was the area here that we are talking about. This region is uh, known as the Sahel. Um, and uh, it goes all the way across Africa from Mauritania and Senegal in, in the, uh, the west over to Djibouti in the east. 
and uh, you can see that there's an Oxfam poster here um, saying that up to 50 million more people will be at risk of hunger um, as a result of uh, famine from the drought in this region. So obviously uh, a very, very significant social and economic impact that's going to that's happen there. Um, now this is a slide that I showed you last week and it's really clear wasn't it that the Arctic sea ice was uh, really reducing and we had this uh, this example from September 1984 and September 2012 which really demonstrated quite a significant uh, loss of ice. Um, but what really I'd also like to highlight um, which I didn't say last week was this area here and this is Greenland um, and um, Greenland is a bit of a problem for particularly the issue of um, sea level rise because not well, sorry the the ice on Greenland's land is melting and um, if the ice slides off Greenland off the land uh, it's going to end up in the sea and a little bit like if you drop an ice cube into your drink and the more ice cube that you put into your drink the more water is going to be displaced or more coca-cola whatever it is you're drinking um, so that's the first issue that, that's potentially um, in, going to increase um, uh, sea level rise um, but we also need to be aware that we in this part of the world in Europe we are fed some very very warm water uh, from um, down in uh, it, it comes from the Caribbean actually and really that warm water gives us our, our nice sort of mild um, relatively warm European and Mediterranean climate. Now if all of this cold water comes out of Greenland it may interrupt that cycle. It's something called the thermohaline solution and it may actually interrupt that cycle so we may not be getting our nice flow of warm water from the south anymore so that could be a potential really big issue for us. Um, this was something that I found uh, a little while ago and, and it's really really exciting and I would really advise all of you to click on this particular link. NASA has some fantastic resources aimed at students of your kind of age so again this is the link to click on over here um, and um, what you'll see is that you've got some images of climate change, you've got climate change mobile app, climate change machines please do go on to that website and play around because there's loads of really fantastic stuff to discover in there so I really hope that you make use of that it's a fantastic resource to help you with your week's work and also just for your own entertainment. Um, so finally just to, to summarize um, all of these impacts well first of all up here you've got the wildfires haven't you and um, <coughs> excuse me wildfires are uh, occurring and, and always occur in times of drought so when you haven't had much rain and we know from measuring the climate that there are certain areas which are experiencing increased levels of drought um, increase higher temperatures and therefore increasing wildfires. We know that there is a risk of sea level rise. Um, we know that a lot of the ice on the land is potentially going to melt and, and flow away into the sea and that can potentially raise sea levels. And um, this image that I've got here in the bottom left, that's actually an image of uh, New York, Manhattan, if um, nothing were to be done to to prevent it and I certainly don't want anyone to be alarmed by this but this is what some scientists are suggesting could happen if we don't um, get, a, get, or get a grip on our changing climate. Now this photo in the middle, poor old Mr Polar Bear, is a, um, a, a really quite famous photograph now and the reason it's famous is it, it really demonstrates some of the issues that our wildlife is facing. Now polar bears are, are strong swimmers and they, they swim around um, and they use these blocks of ice to rest when they get tired but of course what we're beginning to find now is polar bears that have drowned because these blocks of ice, these icebergs, are not readily available due to the increasing warming of the oceans. Now when you get an increased 
um, warming of the oceans, you get increased evaporation. And when you get increased evaporation, um, that evaporation uh, or that, that water vapour will rise and it will condense and it will turn into rain clouds and eventually again it will fall as rain. So what we also might see is increases in flooding due to increased amounts of rain and particularly violent cloud bursts and you've got that picture there to demonstrate this in the bottom right hand corner. We've had a particularly wet winter this year and there's certainly some areas of the UK that have very unfortunately flooded. Um, but again, that's potentially a symptom of uh, this changing climate that we are experiencing. And then number five up here, as I said to you last week, it's always a good idea in geography um, to try and recognise all sides of the argument before coming to your own conclusion. And this is another image that I've borrowed from NASA. Um, and what they have been doing is tracking the greening of the Arctic. And by that I mean because the ice is retreating, we're actually now beginning to see a little bit more life living in latitudes that they otherwise wouldn't be. So higher latitude means further away from the equator. And normally, um, the further away from the equator, well, very, very high latitudes, um, you wouldn't expect to see much life there because it's just too cold and you, you don't get enough of the ingredients that, that plants need in order to survive. But as our climate's changing, we are beginning to see um, life encroaching into these areas which were otherwise no-go areas for plants and animals. So that is one way that perhaps climate change could provide some more opportunities and you can really develop your thinking um, and the, uh, the richness of the argument and the debate by recognising both sides of the argument. So I'd really um, urge you to not just look for the negative but also maybe some of the positives um, for climate change as well. But I have to say, most of the scientific evidence suggests that changing the climate rapidly is not a very good idea. So I just want to be clear about that. So um, to summarise, what we wanted to do this week was name some of the consequences of a changing climate, to describe the impacts and then elaborate on some of the social, economic and environmental impacts. I hope you can now do that. If you don't, please do get in contact and I'm more than happy to help you. Thank you very much and stay safe.